It seems like for whatever reason, since the Cold War, the European powers have fallen behind the likes of Russia and the US when it comes to aircraft technology. Perhaps the best evidence of this fact is how the European powers really never brought to production a true fifth generation fighter. And we already talked about Russia's attempt to do so in a previous video. So in this video, we're finally gonna explore as many of you have requested in the comments section, those European fighters that are currently in production and that are currently in operation in those European nations. Now, as I've already alluded to, there are not very many of these aircraft. After the fall of the Berlin Wall, many European powers slashed their defense budgets and many really haven't returned to pre-Berlin Wall defense spending. It's easy to tell how little truly has been spent in European development on new aircraft technology by simply looking at the aircraft that are currently in operation. They're almost identical. And it's been that way for over four decades. But I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Which brings us to our first aircraft on our list, the Dassault Mirage 2000. Now the Mirage 2000 was designed as a lightweight replacement to the Mirage 3, but in my opinion, it really doesn't bring any new advancements or updates in technology, no leaps in innovation. So really, it kind of disappointed in that regard. It's a fair price at about $30 million, giving it a score of seven. A top speed of Mach 2.2 earns it a score of seven on speed. It's nine hard points and about 2,000 miles of ferry range, earn it a decent score of seven for versatility. But as I mentioned earlier, its innovation leaves something to be desired, giving it only a score of five. It is, however, the most produced aircraft on our list today at over 600 units produced. It has a wide variety of operators across the globe. It, however, doesn't have as much air combat history, scoring only one air-to-air -air kill and one ground loss, giving it an effectivity score of seven. Next up, also from Dassault, its first flight was in 1986, the Dassault Rafale. This one's primary operators are France and Greece and is a quantum leap in price at over $115 million. However, you're getting a lot more bang for your buck. And that price tag unfortunately earns it only a three on cost. And although its top speed is slightly slower than the Mirage 2000, it has a top cruise speed of 1.4, meaning it has super cruise capabilities, which means it gets a higher speed score at eight. While researching these statistics, I was blown away by the numbers that were fall. The third best combat range of any aircraft on the fighter jet list, 14 hard points, which is the most of any fighter jet I've seen. By the numbers, this should be the most versatile fighter jet I've seen. I started looking at the technology. I noticed that it had a phased array radar. It had super cruise. It was checking all of the boxes, but then I started to look a little bit closer. Although it does currently have a phased array radar, this was a later modification. And unfortunately, one thing that opened my eyes was I found out that in 2002, the Rafal was actually prevented from conducting air to ground operations for literally five years. Five years where the French Air Force needed the Rafale to conduct air to ground operations where it just couldn't. And so unfortunately, I had to give versatility a score of seven. So as I mentioned earlier, the phase array radar and many of the advancements on the Rafale were only added in later modifications. So unfortunately for innovation, I also had to give the Rafale a seven. It has had a fairly successful production run at over 200 units and has sold pretty well to various nations. However, hasn't had any air-to-air -air combat history to speak of. So scores a six for effectivity. Next up, we have our sweetest friends with the Saab JIS-39 Gripen. Inside of Europe, this aircraft flies for the Czech Republic, Sweden, the UK, Hungary, and a variety of countries outside of Europe as well. What I love about this aircraft is it's literally IKEA for air forces. And it's exactly what you would get for quality for a cheap airplane for air forces that can't afford higher quality. But it's still stylish and some assembly required. So coming in at about $30 million, the Gripen gets an eight for cost. It is a respectable top speed of Mach 2, giving a speed score of seven. The Gripen's 10 hard points and subpar combat range give it a six for versatility. And just like your run of the mill IKEA furniture, it's nothing to write home about for innovation. It's pretty much as standard as they come. It gets a five average. And again, no combat history here to speak of, but it has sold decently well for Saab 
and has proven to be a good production aircraft and a great budget aircraft for countries that may not be able to afford all the bells and whistles. So next up we have the BAE Harrier II, but we've actually already ranked that one in our US aircraft fighter jet rankings. So I'm not gonna go over too much detail about that one, but I will recap the score for you real quick. For cost, it gets a six. For speed, it gets a three. Versatility, it got a five. For innovation, it got a seven. For effectivity, it got a four. And its overall score was a 5.2. And like I said, if you wanna learn more about that, make sure you check out my video talking about the US fighter jets ranked. And last but certainly not least was the Eurofighter Typhoon. This was a multinational design effort with the likes of Leonardo, BAE, and Airbus, which were Italian, British, and French companies respectively. The primary operators of the Typhoon are now the UK, Germany, Italy, and Spain. The Typhoon definitely comes with a price tag at over $124 million, giving it a score of two on cost. But it definitely is fast and it has supercruise as well, so it gets an eight on speed. For versatility, it has 13 hard points and is able to perform a variety of functions from air superiority to air to ground operations, so it gets an eight for versatility as well. Not only does this aircraft have supercruise, but it also has a phased array radar and has a reduced radar cross section. This is certainly one of the most advanced aircraft in the world. And although it's not a fifth generation aircraft, nor is it all aspect stealth, it incorporates radar absorbing materials known as RAM to reduce its radar cross section. This is why some would classify this aircraft as a fourth plus generation instead of a just a fourth generation aircraft. So without any further ado, we finally have the ranking of all five of the currently operational European produced and European flown aircraft. On the top, the Eurofighter Typhoon, the Dassault Rafale, the Dassault Mirage 2000, the Saab Gripen, and finally, the BAE Harrier II. So just a quick update for you. I know I haven't posted in a while. This is a new set because I moved houses and new state. I've started a new master's program. Uh, I have a lot, a lot of changes in the past couple months. So thank you for bearing with me. And thank you for watching this video. I've had a lot of new subscribers. So thank you and welcome to the channel for all of you new. Um, I'm gonna have a lot of new videos coming out. So thank you and thank you for your patience. So if you wanna see the full ranking list, make sure you check out the next couple of my videos because I'm gonna be completing the ranking list coming up soon. I'm gonna be ranking all of the Russian operational fighter jets as well coming up in my next video. I'm also gonna be revisiting the Top Gun video coming up soon. So those videos are coming out soon. So make sure if you're not subscribed that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for everyone that has subscribed recently. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and Godspeed.